Hello everyone, it's Saurav and today I'll be showing you how you can use or how you can set up a basic project structure in Nest.js with GraphQL and MicroOrm. Uh, first thing I want to tell you is that I'm using uh, Linux which is a Ubuntu based distro called PopOS. Uh, however, the commands will be exactly the same for any probably any distro and we'll be using majorly npm package commands so I don't think there will be much trouble for other. The first thing is to open up terminal. Uh, I've just pressed Control alt t For Windows users, you can just open up your command prompt by simply searching it out, right-clicking and opening as administrator. Now, I'm, I'll be heading over to desktop first. So what I did was just cd desktop. And now, now I'm that, that I'm here in desktop, I'm going to say like make directory and let's say Nest.js tutorial. So I'm going to be heading into this directory now. You, you can follow this along from whichever project or directory you're using. It doesn't really matter. Now, the first thing you want to do is to make sure like and I'm here, so I'm back at the old directory. I just opened up a new terminal. The first thing that you want to do is to make sure that you have the latest version of uh, Nest.js CLI. So here's a simple thing. So the, all they want is to like say npm i g and do Nest.js CLI. I already have it installed. However, you need to run this command. Also, while you're using a global flag, you need to apply sudo before for Linux users and for Mac users because this is gonna require administrative privileges. Okay. So now that we have done that, just press enter and that's gonna update it to the latest version. Okay, now that we have that installed, I'm just gonna exit this. What I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna say nest new and right here, you generally need to specify a project name. Now, since I already have the directory created, I don't want to create another directory. I'm just gonna put in dot slash, like that means right here. Uh, also, it will be asking you which package manager you're gonna use. You can select yarn if you want, but for this, I'll be using NPM. Okay, now that we have that out of the way, the first thing that we wanna do is to uh, open this up so you can use whatever code editor you want i'll be using vs code you can use webstorm or uh, what is it sublime text editor it's completely up to you okay now back here the first thing that we want to do is to is to install some packages now that we have them here we will we'll be using quite a lot of packages not a lot but a few ones and i'll be heading over to graphql let's just head over and install graphql directory first of all now uh, i do think they just updated it uh, because it wasn't here before so if you're facing trouble with GraphQL, make sure to install version two, Apollo Server Express. This must be on version two. The reason for doing that is that Apollo Server version three, which is the latest version, literally did not work with Nest.js eight. So I'm gonna be copying this. So it's like npm install Nest.js GraphQL, GraphQL tools, GraphQL itself, and Apollo Server Express. Okay, now that we have everything ready, what we're gonna be doing is we'll be going over to MicroORM. And right in here in microorm.io, I'm just gonna go ahead and documentation. We'll be going to recipes and we're gonna be clicking usage with Next.js, Nest.js. Now here, you can use yarn. If you're using yarn, copy that command. And if you're using npm, copy that command. For this video, I'm gonna be using PostgreSQL. It's up to you if you're using SQLite, MySQL, MariaDB, or MongoDB, it's going to be up to you. Now, once you have that installed, you'll be seeing that we have everything up. That's MicroORM, Core, NestJS, and PostgreSQL. So yeah, that is it. Now, the time to set it up. So the first thing that I want to tell you is that we'll be using, we'll be using, needing one more package, and it's called TSMorph, and I'll be telling you why. So let's just install it first. And also, you need to save it as uh, dev dependency. So I'm just going to say like TSMorph. Let's just install it. TS Morph will be using as a developer dependency. Do not so don't worry that it will be coming in your own package later. It's a bit big package, but yeah, it's as a developer dependency, so no issue. Second thing, why we're using uh, this TS Morph, I'll be showing you right here. If you come over to defining entities, so we can use something called reflect metadata, which is to like we'll be having to explicitly tell uh, the entities what type of thing they are. But if you're using TS Morph. You'll be seeing that everything goes less so right here you can see it if i go here so for here at created at we need to explicitly tell that this is a date we need to explicitly tell everything like what's the value of it it's a number it's nullable okay but if we do ts morph you don't need to tell you can just put in a question mark there which is the typescript syntax for something being optional and it's automatically gonna pull in that nullable to be true so this is what ts morph does it's actually pretty helpful, but I'll, I'll be showing you how you can set everything up. All right, so now once we are in GraphQL, there's a few things that we need to do. So going back to usage with Nest.js and coming down, we need to set up the controller or the module. So let's head over to our code editor and nothing, we need nothing more probably. Let's go to source file and right here in app.module.ts, we need to import something. 
now right here oops I should be switching up so now in imports what we're going to be doing importing is first of all we'll be importing GraphQL we'll be setting up GraphQL a bit later so first let's set up microorm so I'm going to be using microorm module it's going to be automatically imported if it is not just import microorm module from microorm dot slash nestjs dot for root we'll be using for root to for right now uh, to be honest I think we can we can do it the other way uh, do not follow this I have a better way for this the better way for doing it is to initialize just like this I'm just gonna save here so now you might be thinking like wait what now how are we gonna initialize this stuff so that's what I want to show you so if I just come back here and say npm run start dev so right if I just close it it's gonna say that micro orm configuration file not found and it's automatically the best part is that it's automatically looking for this file the best part about this is that we can use this file to even more explicitly like configure micro orm so what we're gonna do is that right here inside of source we're gonna be creating another file that's gonna be uh, called micro orm micro micro hyphen orm dot config dot ps now trust me it's actually asking for javascript but we'll be using typescript and i'll be showing you how to you can do that so first of all let's come here inside of package.json there's one thing that we need to do uh, so right here uh, just below jest so now if you come here uh, at the bottom example they actually have a pretty good example of this file being set up here it's actually an example file so we'll be, we'll be using something like this however I'll not be showing you the SQL highlighter you, you can use whatever you want for TS morph metadata provider we'll be using that okay so let's just go ahead and, and configure this file ourselves so I'm gonna just uh, come down here because there's one thing that we need to do if you go back to source folder and like the real one here inside of packet.json if you come down below you'll be seeing this we need to copy this so let's just let's just see what it, this thing is so this is micro home configuration for package.json the first thing that we are specifying is to use TS node and the second thing is the configuration paths so right here you can see we're using both TypeScript and JavaScript so right here I'm gonna say const, const config this is gonna be of type option now this options is gonna come from micro orm core it's from there now that we have that let's just open it and there are a few things that we need to do fortunately for us we already have a uh, TypeScript running in the background so it's gonna tell all the options that are available inside but first let's just export it so I'm gonna say export default config now once that is done the program will run perfectly now if I press control uh, space that's gonna tell me everything inside of this so you can see there are a lot of things here not a lot just here not that much but there are a few things that you're going to be needing so let's just start defining them one by one so the first thing that we need to do is to type in the type so what type are we going to be using for this we'll be using postgresql and the host is going to be localhost and for the port we'll be using 5432 which is the default port on which postgresql runs and the user is going to be postgresql that's like the default uh, one that we use okay not the something too complicated now the password itself is going to be postgresql or maybe just postgres <laughs> forget about uh, ql part that was my foolish mistake okay now that we have that ready that's the basic configuration you're going to be needing uh, for example there's one more thing that we need to provide it that's the DB name what database name we'll be using and let's just say SJS tutorial okay so we have that uh, it also needs something which is called entities so there are two things that it's actually needing like entities and entities TS which is the TypeScript file of entities and the entities itself they these are in JavaScript so we'll be providing with an array and this is gonna be dist which is the distribution directory right here it's automatically compiled once you run npm start run dev and i'm going to say star star slash star dot e n t i t y dot t s e t i t y dot t s entity dot t s that's yeah so this is going to be like oh wait that's not t s that's j s that's entities the exact same is going to be for entities typescript and that's where this comes in so it's going to be source and star 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 dot e n t i t y dot t s that's like the basic thing that you need because uh, now why were you doing this because the entities itself are going to be compiled to javascript however 
your uh, like the class validators or anything that you're going to be doing is probably possible only and only in the TypeScript TypeScript world. So it's going to be referring it again and again. And how it's going to do that is actually using something called a metadata provider. So I'm going to be saying that metadata provider is itself. Now this is going to be TS morph. I do not think it's automatically going to import it for me. Okay, no problem. I'm going to be import it. For so let's say import and there's one thing that we need is the reflection and I think I haven't installed it yet we need to install one more thing let's just go back and come here and I'm gonna say npm install at micro arm and this is not gonna be like this one this is what we need all right now that we have it installed you can you you probably might be seeing it here uh, in micro arm reflection and now right back here what we're gonna be saying is uh, let's just come in here and let's say MIKRO micro arm reflection and what we need to import it import from this is TS morph metadata provider come down below uncomment this and let's say TS morph TS morph metadata provider, and that's it that's the most basic configuration you need to do uh, so let's just go ahead and set up progressive SQL or the Postgres SQL cell now uh, first thing that I really uh, would love to say is that I pr probably think that you have your database up and running because this is not a PostgreSQL tutorial. Uh, and for this part, I'll be using Docker because I really don't want to mess with, like do a lot of stuff that's involved. So I'm just gonna say Docker run and I think I already have it. <laughs> so let's just say right here, I'm gonna say not me, but I'm gonna just say NestJS tutorial, tutorial, T-O-R-I-L, is that correct? Yeah. And this is gonna be running on port 5432 and we're also going to be providing with an environmental variable that's PostgreSQL password which is Postgres and uh, it's going to be running detached and the name is itself PostgreSQL so let's press enter and there it goes so I'm going to just say docker container ls to list that and that's the progressive SQL up and running now I'll be using pg admin to have a look at it you can use whatever software you want to I'll be using pg admin for right now and if I just go ahead just give it, give it a second all right, now that we are here, we're going to be s seeing this one, which is not mine. This is not mine, trust me. So I'm just going to create a new one. This is probably because it actually happened that way. <laughs> so it's going to be NestJS tutorial. Nest, let's say NestJS tutorial. The connection itself is going to be on localhost and 5432. The uh, username is Postgres. And also make sure you provide the password as Postgres. I'm going to be saving it. Yeah, just save it now let's just refresh the connection make sure that we connect it now in the database it's already ha it already have a database postgres but if you go back uh, in the configuration file you remember we created a database name called nestjs tutorial so let's just copy this i'm just going to copy it and go back to pg admin and i'm going to create a new database the name of the database itself is going to be nestjs tutorial and i think i do not need to do anything else yeah just leave everything as it is let's just okay now that we have that up and running we can go back and start our server so this is not gonna run trust me all right so the first thing that it says that no entities were de discovered now that is because we did haven't created any entities yet first of all let's just go ahead and create entity stuff because let's get those done with so I'm gonna just go ahead and close the server and I'm gonna just say nest G which is to nest generate you can also drive in help to see what sort of things that you can generate with nest CLI and you can see you can generate controllers you can generate decorators and a lot of everything like entire module itself so right here we're gonna be generating module and let's say this is module user not user say this module student just for the test right so now that we have our module let's also generate a service it's going to be student self student student now do not generate the controller you do not need the controller so right here let's just go in module and I'm gonna be saving it first of all now before we go ahead and do anything else let's just set up GraphQL itself go back here and I think I already installed it but I haven't set it up go back to app.module.ts which is the root app module and right here we're gonna be doing is that I'm just gonna press enter here because those things aren't correct right here I'm gonna just say GraphQL module and for for root that's what we needed after all 
Okay. Now there are two things that I'm gonna be turning on. And that's the debug and oops. Playground. Oops, that's true. Okay. So now we have GraphQL up and running. Uh, let's just go ahead and check everything up already. So what I did in GraphQL was simply uh, something that you can probably do, uh, check from documentation itself. It's not something way too complicated. You just need to do that and everything is gonna be up and running. However, however, if you're not gonna be seeing everything uh, that pretty good, the reason for that is because GraphQL itself needs something called schema. And now if you do not have a schema file, this is not gonna work. Also, you need to provide them separately. But what we're gonna be doing is that we're gonna be setting something called auto schema file and we're gonna be setting this to true. What this does is that it's automatically gonna look for schema files inside of your entire directory and gonna generate schema files for it. You can provide def definitions separately if you want. So this is majorly a code first approach as Nest.js calls it here. It's called the coast code first approach. So yeah, this is what we're gonna be doing. Let's just go back and now that we have GraphQL up and ready and now you'll be seeing a few more things. Let's just try to run this. So if I run it, you can see GraphQL is working pretty normally. The only thing is that we do not have entities file. So let's just go ahead and create some entities. So in student, let's just create a student dot entity TITY dot TS. That's gonna be the entity file. Now in the entity file, what we're gonna be doing is that first let's type an entity which is the like entire thing that that's the de decorator which uh, like which tells everything and I'll also make sure this is from micro or so that goes and I'm gonna say export class student student that's gonna be the student okay now that we have student up and ready let's just create a few things there are two ways you can do this one you can tell everything uh, yourself or let's just go ahead and look at the documentation so right here in defining entities, what I'm going to be doing is that I'm going to be coming down and right here in author.ts, I'm just going to be copying this. I don't want to talk way too long. So right here, I'm going to be deleting almost the things that we do not need. And where is this coming from? Yeah, I don't need that. I don't need that. And yeah, this is extra. Rare. And right here, let's just, uh, I'm, I'm going to be not going to be showing you way too much on this. So do not worry, think about it way too much. So let's just leave email and age yeah that's much okay now i'm going to be importing everything now so now here you can click this bulb icon and click on uh, add all missing imports that's going to import everything up all right there's one thing that we do not need the first thing is that thing is that we do not need this the reason that we copied it was from mongodb something i think so that's right it's like that so i'm just going to do a string that's it so now that we have our entity ready, I probably think this is still not gonna work. Yeah, that's still not gonna work because we need to provide it. And how are we gonna do that? It's not that complex. Right here in student.module.ts, we're gonna be doing something. So let's say imports, and I'm gonna be giving it an array. Now right here, I'm gonna say, uh, what is it, microorm.module, and it's going to be for feature. Remember, you're not doing it on the root directory. And I'm going to be providing with an entity file that's going to be, let's say, what is it? Yeah, I think I export it as student. Yeah, student. So if I save it, you will see that it will start running. Oh no, it's not. Query root must be provided. That's because we do not have our queries. Okay, let's just go ahead and set up queries. So what we're going to be doing is that we're going to be creating a new file. Let's call it student, student, if I can spell that correctly, dot resolver.ts that's going to be the resolver okay now in resolver we need this because that's how this entire entity is going to work so inside of resolver let's just create a resolver decorator so it's going to be a uh, whoops resolver and i'm going to be importing it from graphql do not import from anywhere <laughs> just make sure it's from nest.js graphql right here now now that we have that up and ready let's say export class and this is going to be student student resolver okay now uh we need to do a few more things the first thing is that we're going to be create a constructor we're going to be creating a constructor constructor and let's just say this is private 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 it's not users student student service and this is going to be a type student service 
right here this is automatically imported from student service the service that we created it's completely empty but we'll be working on it a bit later so yeah there there's the resolver up and running we also need to provide this resolver in the providers so make sure to provide it let's say student resolver and i probably think this is going to be fine now that's still not that's probably because it needs a query query so let's just go back right here i'm going to be creating a comments queries and let's just import query this is going to be coming from nest.js not common make sure this is not from common but graphql okay now right here will be uh, this is a decorator also that it needs to return a type but don't worry about it right now let's just say get stuff right for now so i'm going to be returning a string return this is this is working let's just save it and yeah it still gives us an error now why does it does so now that's because uh if you if you read here query stuff will define in resolver but not in schema if you use query decorator with code first approach enable remember explicitly provide a return type function what it is saying is that this thing right here needs to accept a function that's going to be telling us what is the type of thing that's going to be returning so we'll be saying string is going to be returned however this is going to be capital string i think yeah oops let's just save it and if you go back uh, there we go everything's up and running now make sure that you have uh, deba uh, to be honest playground to be set true in your graphql root module let's just go into our browser and say localhost localhost six not six thousand <laughs> three thousand and i'm gonna say graphql right here so this is gonna open up our graphql playground now if this is working till now in yours and if you are able to open this up, that means GraphQL is up and running and MicroORM is up and running. We haven't done anything much with MicroORM, but it is running. That's because it's not popping up with uh, some errors. So let's just open up a query. Let's say get stuff. So if I run it, you're going to see this is working. So yeah, our GraphQL is working. Now, since that is working, why don't we just go ahead and set up uh, Progressive SQL as well? Is it Progressive SQL? I don't know. Why do I call it that way? So now, okay, that we have that up and running. Let's just create a new student dot student dot type dot ts. Now, why do we need types? This is because I'm going to be creating a separate type file. That's going to be like the type file that's going to be indicated for uh, type definitions of GraphQL. So we'll be creating a new type definition file. And this is a code first approach, meaning that we are not going to be writing GraphQL syntax. We'll be writing native TypeScript and by that I mean complete normal TypeScript and that is indeed going to be transferred or translated into GraphQL syntax behind the scenes. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, we're going to be doing by importing something called object type. It's going to be from Nest.js GraphQL. Open that up. Let's export class and this is going to be, it's raining. It's raining heavily here. Student, student type. This is going to be student type. Okay. So it doesn't need a constructor. All that it needs is a field. It's F-I-E-L-D, field. That itself is gonna come from GraphQL. And this field is gonna be an ID. So let's say ID, yeah, just like that. And I'm gonna be providing with ID string. Now, this thing needs to match. These things are what we're defining here. So make sure do not mess, do not mess that up. Also, this I why it doesn't come in here? It's gonna be from ID, I think. Yeah, so if it if it didn't import this for you, make sure that you import it. So let's just go ahead and type in field. That's going to be another field. So field, in a sense, field is like uh, what we define in GraphQL, and you're going to be seeing it later. Don't worry about it. So let's go ahead and why don't we just separate this window and type it up separately? Okay. Now that we have created that, so I'm going to be saying created. Create. Let me just copy that. And if you see it, it should be capital D. Do not make it smaller D. Okay. Now I'm going to be creating something called again a field. Now as you can see I just named it age number and this is probably because we want to ma also make sure that this is an optional property and we need to provide something here. So since this is an optional property what we're going to be doing is that we're going to be opening up this and let me just tell you what this is. If I if I just press it and there are a few things that it shows here if I click in down below there are two things that it accepts. The first is the return type function, which is what does this field return? The second is the field options. And this is what's gonna come and play. So I'm gonna create a function. It's gonna return an integer type. 
because we're going to be accepting age like it's an integer what's your age it's 21 it's not 21.2 it's just 21 so it's 21 okay and next uh, what I'm going to be doing is that I'm going to be creating a uh, object and this object is going to accept something called uh, nullable so this is going to be true as well now you some some people might say that this is not required uh, and actually it is true it's not completely required so I'm going to be importing it for some reason it's not importing automatically in mine so yeah this is this is not generally required because you're using TS morph in the background so this thing will automatically prefix it do this for you so it's up to you I'm gonna be keeping it all right so now let's just close this and where is it let's go to resolver I'm gonna be creating mutations that's gonna be like everything you need to know in this video so I'm just gonna create a mutation here and this itself is gonna be returning student type yeah just like that so now that we have that let's just say create student create student student why am I not spelling things correctly today so right here what we're gonna be doing is that we're gonna be setting up a service that's gonna be doing this work for us and that's where our service comes in however uh, we're gonna be doing a few more things here if you go to student type so we need a name and email majorly name email and age so that's what we're going to be needing and in next.js in nest.js <laughs> what do you do is that you import something called args which is uh, which is this is not nest.js actually this is purely graphql and graphql provides like you four argument four parameters for you those are like the first one is parent the second one is argument the third one is context and the fourth one is information so we're fetching it directly here it's a decorate to to a decorator and yeah whatever so let's just say name and this is going to be name name in real world in real world scenario you won't be doing this you probably might be creating a dto or something or maybe a type but just for the sake of this small tutorial i'm going to be doing that so let's just say this is name what, what more did we have email let's say email this is going to be of type string as well and then we have args oh, this is all right so now we have that let's just open this up whoops okay now that we have that we're going to be saying like return or right, you are in return this dot now we have student service now we haven't created anything inside of it but don't worry we'll be doing it in a minute in a second let's say create student this is not there trust me we'll be doing it right now so name email and age so let's just save it let's go in student service right here so for a service generally uh, in in nest.js you use something called a repository pattern and i'm going to be doing that however i'm not going to be creating an entire repository i'll be directly injecting it here so let's say uh, inject repository and i'll be using student which is going to be the entity itself make sure that that's an entity, not the type now student i'm going to be creating private private uh, students repository repository and this is going to be uh, something like what's this going to be this is going to be entity repository so entity enti ty repository and that's going to take in the entity itself so it's going to be student entity student now I probably think you're already familiar with this because this is not an SGS course, right? So yeah, that's all we needed. I do think that's not because because we need to put that inside of a constructor. Oh, how foolish of me. Let's just move it in. And let's just close this constructor as well. So now that we have repository ready, we can create the function that we need. So I'm gonna say async. This is probably this is asynchronous because we're gonna be interacting with the database right now. So async. What did we I even name it? Create student create student the problem is going to be solved now so in create student we're providing name email and age so let's accept name email and age name email and age also ah, I don't need it okay so it's also also gonna have a return type so the return type is gonna be promise now why is it promise because all async function return a promise so give or take you're doing async or action or not you're gonna be returning a promise so return a promise and that's going to be of type student is it student yeah this is student 
All right, so now that we have that, let's just go ahead and say const student student equals. Now this is where our repository comes in. So I'm going to say this dot student repository dot create. Now how is this work? How is this working? This is working because of entity repository imported from micro orm. So this is micro orm at play. I'm going to be creating something new. Well, what we're going to be doing is now if I press if I press control enter you're going to be seeing all the things that are required there are few things that we need so we only need the ID uh, so for this I'm going to say some random ID now trust me you don't do this in production you probably use something like UUID but for the sake of this tutorial I'm just going to be randomly signing things and name email and age and I'll say this dot this is going to be student repository dot now if you are coming from something like type arm you probably have something like save in it however micro arm what micro arm has is something called persistence and flush so i don't i just tell you that so if i come here yeah here so in entity manager it says that they have persist and flush so give or take what persist does is that it makes the entity for future persisting so it persists the entity for future like to be saved and flush like whatever you have uh, said that this is going to be saved it's going to save it in the database so that's what flush does what we can do th to this is we can say persist and flush and provide it with an argument the argument itself is going to be student now i'm going to be returning student here because remember we're returning promise student type here so return student there we go that we have the basic create student thing up and running so let's just go ahead and check everything up uh, everything looks pretty fine to me yeah so now that we have everything up and ready there's one last thing we need to do and why don't I introduce to you that to an error so I'm just gonna go back and let's get stuff is on no use let's say mutation we're gonna be saying create student uh, wait I'm gonna be uh, accepting like give me the ID the name of the student the what else do we have we have the name the ID the email the age the created at the updated at okay now let's just define the parameters so let's just go inside yeah so right here it's gonna take like age that's uh something like uh, i don't know 21 it's gonna be age 21 say name and let's say john doe maybe that's what the best name in the world is uh, let's say what else do we have let's say email and that's going to be john at do.com pretty much good now watch what i ha what happens if as i press control enter. now this certainly uh creates something and we have like oh yeah this is working however you'll see on the top server cannot be reached suddenly why because if i go back you'll see we have an error oops yay that's really amazing now what's happening here yay so now how to uh, so what is it it's saying that table does not not found exception why because if i go back to pg admin and inside of nest.js tutorial that was the database we specified because schemas and tables you'll see this is empty so what do we need to do now the first thing and i think almost almost all, all of you know this we're going to be using something called migrations and we're going to be creating migrations to get things up and running with our entities so how are we going to do that we're going to come in here in the micro orm config.ts and right here right here we're going to be saying migrations so you can see it automatically specified for you and why don't i show it to you if i go back in here and let's say say control k migrations if i go to migrations so right here yeah this so it says that initial migration and we can we can do it like uh, the npx micro or migration create way because we're using cli We'll be using my core CLI. However, we need to work for the configuration first. What am I looking for is the path and pattern. So that's probably all we need. So let's just go back. Let's say path. And for path, what I'm going to be doing is, first of all, let's just import. Import path from path. Now here's the best part this won't work you need to import star as but this because everything right here is default exported so that's what we're going to be doing so that's going to be path.join and right here i'm going to say their name and this is going to be dot slash 
migrations ti 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 ons migrations yeah so second thing that we need is the pattern and i'm not going to be typing it out so let's just copy this okay now that we have the pattern it automatically identifies for the ts and ts files you can also make it like to identify the js files you can do like pj something like that that's going to automatically identify for the javascript files okay now that we have that up and running let's just go ahead and create some migrations so it's qu quite simple get back here and we're gonna we're gonna what we're gonna be doing is say we're gonna be using M npx and you already see i have it running up and ready it's gonna be create so we're gonna be running npx micro or migration hyphen create it's right here where is it using cli and we'll be running this command okay so now for that thing to work what we need to do is to install uh something called the cli which is uh, micro orm cli okay so right uh, at the installation and usage you're going to be seeing the last section which is called setting up command line tool what we're going to be doing is that we're going to be installing this and how we can do that is to simply head over say uh, i think i'm inside now so npm install it's going to be micro orm and it's going to be cli because if you do this without it so this is probably going to tell you to show you some sort of error or something now for migrations to run uh, we, we will be running it right through here okay so what we're going to be doing is yeah i do think i have everything up and running yeah i don't think there's much trouble now let's say npx micro arm migration create so this says like migration this ts created successfully now probably i think there is a problem if i go back in no i, I do not think there is a problem so let me just yeah i think there is so yeah nope everything is good and running so it automatically identify our student uh, student file which is the entity file and create a migration for it you have that age the best part about that is that we're using times here so yeah let's just go ahead and push this uh, this thing up and into the into our what do we have it database so I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be saying like npx micro own migration up press enter and it says successfully migrated to the latest version if I go back to pg admin if I just refresh this and go inside table you'll see we have a student table and in the columns we have what we specified now in student table i don't think there will be any data right now because we haven't pushed anything so let's go ahead and try it out if i go back to my playground and if i do this again so first of all make sure that your server is running okay so everything's green and our server is running i just refresh this so that connects back to the server do not worry about these they don't get lost it. and here we go so you can see everything's up and running, no server crashed. And if I go back to PG Admin, uh, let's just refresh this. Refresh, go to student and say, get the data again. And voila, here you have it. Not only does your micro arm is working, your database is working as well. So I hope that is it. You need to, all you need to understand in this video. So why don't I give you a walkthrough? So let me just close everything up first, first of all. So what did we do? The things that you need in general are micro orm CLI, core, NestJS, PostgreSQL, and reflection because you need TS Morph. It's completely up to you. If you want to use something, if you don't want to use TS Morph, if you want to go ahead and work with the native syntax, where is it? Let me just show you. You can make sure that you always, always, always refer to these documentations. They are super amazing and so super helpful as well. So not here. Yep, not here. So if I go to defining entities, right here, if you don't want to use TS Morph, you can always use reflect metadata, which is like the without TS Morph one, but you need to be explicit uh, in order to get it working. So yeah, you need to be pretty explicit. That's why we installed reflection and that's the micro arm stuff. Uh, you can also change your database to whatever you like from PostgreSQL to MongoDB or anything else. Then we install the basic GraphQL tools that we need to set it up. Make sure you're on Gra Apollo Server 2 version 2 and you can check the latest version. Just install at 2 so it's gonna automatically going to fetch the latest version for you. But do not run it on 3. It's not working as of right now. Then we also installed TS Morph, TS Morph a, as our developer dependency and we configured micro ORM to use TS Morph. It's, to be honest, TS Node, not TS Morph. That's what we have. We have TS Node installed. So TS node. Then what we did is that we created something called a micro configuration file. 
Now, trust me, you it's the best practice to create the macro on configuration file like this. Why? Because you can actually specify everything right here. There's no problem in doing that. You can specify like the database database name. It's still gonna work. However, the best part about doing it that way is that you have things completely separate. Not only that, you can actually provide them as environmental variables in production because in production, you do not want your code to be shipped with something that have everything inside of it. Okay, so in the configuration, we just set it up the type of it, the host, the port, the username, the password is completely up to you, the DB name, and then we imported entities, which is the TypeScript entities and the normal JavaScript entities. And we also set up the metadata provider, which is the TSMorph metadata provider. Now, what is this? You can go back here and right here, you can say metadata provider. And in metadata provider, there's an amazing explanation why we're using TSMorph and why we are doing a metadata provider. Okay, then we set up the migrations path, which is just copy and paste, just get it from the documentation. No problem, no, no worries in like doing it that way. Okay, then we set up the GraphQL module to import automatically import the schema files. However, this is the code first approach. And then we go ahead and created the entire module for students. This is the uh, this is the general thing that you need to do. You need to create an entity, and that's how you create an entity in MicroARM. Uh, this also this is also mentioned here, defining entities. They have a pretty good explanation of it. And then we created the resolver. We do not need controller since we have a resolver. So yeah, that is it. Now, uh, if you want to take something, then take out of this. That make sure that these things aren't like this. Always, always, always make sure that these are shipped into a DTO or or maybe a type itself but do not make sure this just don't make sure that they are like this because this is this is pretty horrible <laughs> because say if you're using this as several places this is gonna be this is gonna be getting way too long and that's what we do not want okay so yeah that is it and we also used docker to set up our postgres sql so yeah that was it i think this was pretty much a long video <laughs> so i hope you enjoyed this and i hope you learned something out of it and Feel free to ask anything down below in the comments. I'll be always there to help you and reply. And yeah, that was it. Thanks for watching.